Today we're starting on chapter 9, uh, titled Light and Sound. We're going to talk about uh, what light is, try to give you an idea of that. We're going to talk about waves. Waves are very important in understanding both light and sound. And say a little bit about visible light, what we can see. And then we'll talk about sound waves. Now, light is a combination of fields. Light is a combination of an electric field and a magnetic field. And so we get what's called an electromagnetic wave. Uh, a little hard to get a handle on, but this is what we're talking about. We're talking about waves. Now, what is a wave? A uh, picture of a ripple in a water. The, the ripples are waves. And they have a uh, certain shape, they have certain distances between them. So let's see what a wave really is. We talk about different ways of describing a wave. <clears throat> we have a picture of a wave here. We have a peak where the wave has gone as high as it will. And we have a valley where it's gone as low as it will. And then there's the space between the two. And we've got to picture this as moving from the peak to the valley. Sometimes the valley is referred to as the trough. Now, two things that are very important. The wavelength is the distance between two peaks. And we measure that with whatever units we need to. And then the amplitude is how high the peak goes. So the wavelength of light will determine the color or the energy, and the amplitude will determine how, for example, how bright it is. Or if we're talking about sound waves, it will determine how loud it is. Now, if we stretch the wave, we increase the wavelength. You see the, the black li line gives a wave with a certain wavelength, and the red line, we've stretched that wave out, and that leads to a longer wavelength. So we squeeze the wave, and the opposite happens. We have the darker line, the black line, certain wavelengths. We squish that in, and that kind of bluish line, there's a shorter wavelength. So let's talk about what it means. If we talk about electromagnetic energy, we're talking about wavelengths of all sorts. So things that we can perceive, things that we can't perceive, things that we have to have uh, different systems to detect. Starting on the left-hand side, the radio waves. We're all familiar with turning on the radio and getting something, sound or music. And uh, those are radio waves. They're Planets and stars put out radio waves that we can detect. Microwaves are the next area. We use microwaves for transmission of um, messages. You've probably all seen the big microwave towers various places. And then the infrared. The infrared is mainly heat. Heat gives off infrared radiation. And that's what we use to uh, sometimes to cook things. Then there's the visible light, the, vis the light that we can see. And then there's the ultraviolet light. Uh, and the ultraviolet light is wavelengths that are too short for us to see, but uh, they're responsible for suntan and sunburn. And then we get into x-rays and gamma rays, so very, very short wavelengths of light that we can, we find very useful, but uh, we can't perceive. Now, many animals can see in the infrared region, but humans cannot. So we have night vision goggles. One of the things that night vision goggles does is enhance the vision. It picks up the um, infrared, it picks up the heat from an object and allows us to see it much more clearly. So even when when it's dark out, we can use the infrared energy to pick up uh, what we're looking for. Visible light is the uh, wavelength you, that we can see, and it ranges from um, the, the sort of orange on one end down to the purple on another end, the orange being longer and the 
purple shorter. Here's a picture of it. The red wavelengths you notice are fairly spread out. The long wavelengths and we get down into the green, the blue, the violet. These are shorter wavelengths. The wavelength determines the exact color of the particular material. Now sound waves are somewhat different in some respects. Um, low pitch is low frequency. High pitch is high frequency. So we're talking pretty much the same sort of a thing in terms of wavelengths. You notice the low pitched peaks are kind of far apart. The high pitched peaks are very far apart. And the amplitude would determine how loud. Sound waves are moving air. So when we talk about light, we're talking about electromagnetic radiation. When we talk about sound, we're talking about waves in air. So these are particles that are moving. These are air particles, and they uh, head up against the eardrum and give us the sound. Now, <clears throat> a vibrating guitar string, this is an instrument that I enjoy playing, when, the, when you pluck the guitar string, it moves air. It causes the air to vibrate. And the guitar is built with the sound hole and other things to help that air vibration so you can hear it. Now, sound intensity is measured in bells, B-E-L-S. And uh, we talk about decibels, lowercase d, capital B. And the, the bell system is kind of like the Richter system for earthquakes. A Richter 7 earthquake is 10 times as intense as a Richter 6 earthquake. And 20 bells is 10 times as intense as 10 bells. So we've got, we've got a wide range of uh, sounds, some of which are very, very quiet. A, a wilderness in the 20 decibel range, um, very quiet. You might hear an occasional insect or something, but uh, rustling leaves. Uh, rainfall, somewhat louder. Conversation, 60 decibels. Chainsaws, 100, which means that a chainsaw is 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000 times as loud as uh, ordinary conversation. Average traffic is pretty loud. A rock concert is 110. That's really loud. That's louder than a chainsaw. Uh, so, and you notice is sound pressure, and that's an important thing to keep in mind because the sound pressure impacts the eardrums. And if you're exposed to too much pressure over a long period of time, you can do some very real damage to the eardrums which is why your parents probably tell you to turn the radio down if you listen to the radio. Okay, what have we learned today? What have we talked about? We've talked about light as an electromagnetic wave. It has an electric field and a magnetic field. And you're going to find as you get into this that we, we really don't have a lot of answers as to what light is. There's still some very interesting physics questions going on about light. We've defined some terms. We've talked about amplitude being the height of a wave. The wavelength is the distance between two successive peaks. Both of these are very important for both sound and light waves. We've talked about color. Short wavelengths are blues and purples. Long wavelengths are reds and oranges. And in between wavelengths are yellows and greens. And, and there's a uh, spread. Sound waves are waves of moving air. And the pitch gives the frequency for the sound. When we talk about uh, a high C, we mean something very specific about that. We can actually tell you what the frequency is in terms of cycles per second. Um, I don't remember what it is right off the bat, but we could tell you that so many cycles per second. A low C would be so many cycles per second. And uh, you can define things that way. The sound intensity is measured in decibels. 
so that we can and we can measure these there are decibel meters that people use uh, I've even seen them used in churches to make sure that the worship band doesn't get too loud for people. It can be a little painful. So that's our brief survey of light and sound and waves, and thank you for watching.